Amen. Amen. Well, I want to welcome everybody, and again, if you're a guest, we're so glad you're with us. My name is Jared Ming. I'm the lead pastor here. So great to have our church community joining us. You know, we have many different locations. We're one church in many locations, kind of like the New Testament church. They'd come to the temple, and then they'd spread out all through Jerusalem and other cities, and it's kind of what's happening here at Higher Vision. And we have our church family that's joining us online. Um, We have people out in the Philippines joining us today. We have Hawaii. Come on, hang loose. Somebody in Hawaii, Pennsylvania, Oregon, Nevada, so many other places. I can't even name them all. We also have our church family joining us in Canyon Country. Last week, I shared with you that we have people in Louisiana, and they sent me a shirt that said, we're called the Cajun Country Campus. Because there are some Cajuns down there worshiping God. So we got them with us. We've got Higher Vision Santa Paula. We got Crescenta Valley joining us. Shout out to Pastor Randy and the team, Pastor Andrew. Man, so awesome. And of course, we've got Higher Vision Ventura. Man, it is awesome. And we do this every week. Can we do this wherever you are, whatever location you are? We're so blessed to have you with us. Can we put our hands together and welcome each other to church? Welcome. So good. So, so here's what we're going to do today. I'm going to share from my heart. Just this week, I had the Lord just kind of take me on a detour. I had planned to preach a certain message. We're in, the, we're in this theme, what is worship? How many have been learning some things about worship the last few weeks? So we, we've been learning about the power of God's presence. We learned about biblical expressions of worship. And this week, I was going to talk about how worship is a, a form of spiritual warfare. But I felt like the Lord did a U-turn. And here's why. Because, man, I tell you what, God has been pulling on my heart, drawing me in like never before. I I literally feel like this. I feel like I've gotten saved again. Like I found Jesus again. I I don't know what it is. Part of it, I've been watching the show, The Chosen, and it's, uh, if you haven't seen it, it's amazing. And I literally cry. And after every episode, I'm like, I just love you, Jesus, you know. But it's real. Something is going on in my heart. Last Sunday night, we just had this special night where we said, the doors are open. If you want to get closer to Jesus, come. Hundreds of people showed up. We had almost 30 people get baptized just in the middle of the service. People got saved. Healings, miracles. And I just, because of what God is doing and because we're seeing kind of revival. What is revival? Now You could define it a lot of ways. I could preach on it. But let me just simplify some things. I think revival is when... People become hungry for God. People want to encounter with God. People want to hear his voice. People want to draw close to him. Christians who've gotten a little dry or people who are far away are drawn close to the light. And so today I want to talk to you about this. We're going to talk about worship. What is worship? But we're going to talk about this, hearing the voice of God. I want to talk to you about that because I think people are hungry and, and desire to hear the voice of God. So I'm going to just read a story in the Bible, and I'll be honest with you, I took my notes last night, kind of threw them out, moved them around. I don't even know what we're going to do today other than I'm going to read this story, I'm going to refer to my phone a little bit, and I'm going to tell some stories of how I've heard the voice of God in my life. So how many are open and hungry to more of God? How many are open to saying, I want to learn to hear God's voice? Come on, can higher, higher Vision Candy Country, is there somebody over there that wants to hear, wave at me, that wants to hear the voice of God? Santa Paula, wave at me. You're hungry. Pastor Jordan, come on. You're hungry to hear the voice of God. Crescenta Valley, I don't know about you, I want to hear the Lord's voice. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to dive in. We've been learning about this concept of worship that basically God is looking for true worshipers, people who worship in spirit and in truth. It's not just one or the other, it's both, that we involve our whole being, that it's based on biblical truth, right? The right foundation. And so I want to talk to you about hearing his voice, and the way I want to do it is I want to share with you a story where someone heard the voice of God. So I'm going to just read this. It's going to take me a little while. Normally, you know, sometimes at Higher Vision, I have you stand and we read the passage together. There's too much for you to read with me at each location. But I want you to tune in because don't, you know, I don't know if you've ever had a commercial come on and what did you do? You start looking at your phone or you zone out. Anybody ever done that? Some of you have already done it. You just did. (laughs) Come on, how many are with me? Say amen. amen. Will you not zone out? I want you to listen to this. There's a special child that was born miraculously. His name was Samuel, a woman who couldn't have children. God answered a prayer and she 
gave a, she, she had a child and she said, if you'll give me a child, God, I'll give him back to you. And that child was given to the house of God. Don't bring your children and drop them off at the house of God. I'm just saying it. But, but they did it then and Samuel was to be raised in the house of God. So I want to read to you what happened. All of our locations, you can see at the bottom of your screen. If you're here, you can see on the side. But if you want to just listen, listen to what the scripture says. 1 Samuel 3, verse 1. Meanwhile, the boy Samuel served in the Lord by assisting Eli. Eli was the high priest at the time. Look what it says. Now, in those days, messages from the Lord were very rare. And the visions were quite uncommon. Let me just say this. In other words, the people of God had quit hearing his voice. The head prophet, Eli, the high priest of the nation, had quit hearing God's voice. Nobody was hearing God anymore. But look what happens in verse 2. One night, Eli, who was almost blind by now, had gone to bed. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel, this young, young boy who had been brought to God, was sleeping in the tabernacle near the ark of God. Suddenly, the Lord called out, Samuel! Yes, Samuel replied. What is it? And he got up and he ran to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? I, I didn't call you, Eli replied can kind of read it between the lines. You just woke me up. Just, no, I didn't call you. Then, then here's what he said. I didn't call you. Go back to bed. So he did. Then the Lord called out again, Samuel. Again, Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? I didn't call you, my son, Eli said. Go back to bed. Samuel did not yet know the Lord because he had never had a message from the Lord before. So the Lord called a third time. And once more, Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? Then Eli realized the Lord who was call, that the Lord was calling the boy. Then Eli realized it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So he said to Samuel, go and lie down again. And if someone calls again, say, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. So Samuel went to bed. And the Lord came and called as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel replied, speak, your servant is listening. Man, what an awesome story. Can I, can I just begin before I pray for you in every location? Look at me. Could it be that there are a lot of people that don't know that God is calling their name? Could God be waiting to speak to you, but we just haven't learned to hear his voice? Could it be that we're living in a day where people have lost the voice of God? I'm here to tell you, I believe with all my heart, if you're new today and you don't know anything about Jesus, anything about God, anything about the Bible, can I tell you something? God's calling you and he's calling your name. And he's things that he wants to tell you. And maybe you're here and you're like a mature Christian who's been around forever. He's calling your name, and he has things he wants to say to you. So I don't know about you. I want to hear the voice of the Lord. How many would say amen to that? So in every location, can you just close your eyes but stretch your hand towards the screen, wherever you are in each location? Crescenta Valley, just stretch it out. Canyon Country, Santa Paula right here, Valencia, just stretch out your hand towards heaven. Those joining us online, stretch your hand out. Father, I pray that you'd help me somehow to get out of the way, and Lord, let your voice be heard. That no one would leave saying that was a, a good story or a great song, but they'd leave saying, wow, I heard my name. I heard that God spoke to me. He said something to me. So Lord, speak to us today. Our hearts are open and ready. In Jesus' name. And everybody shouted, amen. amen. You may be seated. Thank you. So I want to give you some thoughts about hearing the voice of God. I'm going to tell some stories today. When you read this passage, you discover that God wanted to speak even in a season where people weren't listening or hearing anymore. 
So I'm going to give you a few thoughts, okay? And, and honestly, as I was thinking about it last time, I'm like, God, how do I teach on this subject? This could be a whole series on its own. I could teach four weeks alone just taking stories and examples out of the Bible. But we're going to use this one story of someone who started to hear the voice of God and began to pursue to say, God, I want to hear your voice. So here's the first principle. If you're taking notes, write this down in each location. If we want to hear the voice of God, the first thing is we need to understand this, and that is that God speaks through his presence. God speaks through his presence. We've learned that, that when we worship, he sits down, he inhabits the praises of his people. We learned that in week one. It's not that God shows up because God is everywhere, but it's that you and I suddenly start to become aware of his presence, and we acknowledge him in such a way that he begins to establish his authority in our life because we give him that authority. We surrender to his plan, and we open our eyes, and we start to see him. And when we read this story, what's interesting is the very first thing that that grabs my attention is that the way that they heard the voice of God, that Samuel heard the voice of God, was that he was drawing close to God's presence. Some of you say, what do, what do you mean? Where did that, where'd you find that? Well, let's go back to 1 Samuel chapter 3, and it says this. It says, Samuel was sleeping in the tabernacle near the ark of God. Suddenly, the Lord called out. And when the Lord called his name, Samuel, he jumps up and he runs away from the presence towards Eli. What's interesting is that Eli, who's the high priest, had quit hearing God's voice. And here we see two different people. One individual isn't prioritizing God's presence, isn't spending time in the presence of the Lord, and yet he hasn't heard the Lord in a long time. But there's someone who's moving closer to God's presence by sleeping near the ark. The ark was this piece of furniture that God had built Moses said, God gave Moses the design, and so they built this ark, and on the top of the ark, there were two cherubim angels that had wings that were kind of came together like this, and between it, what was called the mercy seat, and on that mercy seat, the the Bible tells us that there was this, in the Holy of Holies, this blue flame that just resided there. It wasn't a trick. It wasn't electrical that they ran a cord through. They didn't have electricity back then. It was God literally showed up with his manifest presence between the wings of worship and the mercy seat. And isn't it interesting that this place of worship is where Samuel wanted to be? Because I'm here to tell you that when you spend time with God, you're going to hear his voice. We can go all the way back into the Old Testament like Moses. Remember Moses went up the mountain and guess what? God spoke to him first in the the bush that caught on fire. And then later, every time he would go up the mountain or he would go into the tabernacle, the Bible says that there would be a cloud that would descend. He would go close to God. He would get into God's presence and God would speak to him. You could see it with Elijah when he ran to the mountain. Remember, he ate the the angel food cake that God gave him. And then he went for 40 days and he went up the mountain. And the Bible says that he's on top of the mountain. A fire came and an earthquake came and a still small voice. He was pursuing the presence of God. You can even see it all the way into the New Testament when Zechariah, the priest. And remember, God hadn't spoken for a long time. But Zechariah goes in as the priest and he's doing the work of God in the holy place. And where is it that God begins to speak? In his presence. And he tells him that his wife, Elizabeth, is finally going to have a child who's John the Baptist. You see, it's interesting because what happens often is, is we are distant from his presence, which I think ends up creating distance from his voice. Originally, let's think about it for a minute. Distance causes separation from God and from his voice. And we know what causes distance often. And I know it's going to look a little comfortable, but, this is, but it's a word that has three letters, and it's got I in the middle of it. And it's the word sin. How many here have ever sinned? Right? We've all made mistakes. Think about it. In the garden, God would walk with Adam and Eve every day. And they would talk. There was communication. But because of their sin, what happened? He cast them out of the garden and he put angels in front of it and said, you can't come back in here. Because sin creates distance. 
And what I find awesome that's happening in our country right now is people are coming to God. And, and you know what they're doing? They're coming to altars uh, like this and they're just repenting and saying, God, I just want to give my life to you and I'm sorry for the things I've done wrong. And I, I just, I, I come before you and I humble myself. And guess what hap- guess what's happening? People are hearing God's voice. Things are taking place. Why? Sin distances us from God, but worship draws us close to him. Kind of like this, my my house um, where we live. In fact, when we moved to the Santa Clarita Valley, we, we moved into this house so about 18 years ago. The church will be 18 years old the first weekend in April this coming year. It's amazing how fast time flies. Come on, all of us a little older would say amen to that. It goes quick. How many that are older are like it's going faster and faster every single year? Slow down, clock. Come on, anybody. And um, so... We moved into this house, and it's a, two, it's a two-story house. And the way it works is if you're in the kitchen in the family room, above you in the upstairs is where the master bedroom is. And so there was this one time where Devette was in the master bedroom upstairs, and, and I was downstairs. And how many, when you have a two-bedroom house, after a while living there, you realize it would be nice to have a one-story? And here's why that happens. Because you're downstairs, and you realize you need something upstairs. And then you realize to get it, you have to climb the stairs again to go get it. And sometimes that's just irritating. And so um, I, I, it just so happened I was downstairs and I hear kind of through the walls and through the, the doors, my name, Jared. And I'm like, what was that? And, and I realized it's Devet calling my name. It wasn't the Lord saying Samuel. It was Devet saying Jared. And she's like, um, hey, Jared. I'm like, yeah. And she's like, hey, can you, when you come back up, because she must have been feeling what I feel sometimes. She didn't want to come down and get it. So she's like, can you bring up your blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, sure. And so I think I know what she says. So I start gathering up the stuff that she wanted. It might have been coffee or something. I don't know. And, um, she, you know, like this morning, I brought her a cup of coffee before I left to come to church um, when she's getting ready and stuff. And so um, I don't do that every day. Um, but she asked me, and I said, yes, and I should do it every day. This is a whole, I don't know why I'm, I'm confessing. We were talking about confessing our sin. So when we have the altar call, I'm going to be right here, just to let you know. And so anyway, I'm getting around doing stuff, and, and as I'm walking up, I'm like, hey, babe, I'm coming. And then as I get up the stairs about half the way, I'm like, I've got so-and-so. And she's like, Why? And I realized that that's not what she'd asked for because I couldn't really understand her voice because of how far away I was. Because here's an interesting thought. Distance creates distortion. And there's a lot of people in our world who have a very distorted view of God and his voice. But it's because they're so far from him or it's because our sin has set in so much like Eli, the high priest, who was not walking in righteousness. His sons were sinning in the house of the Lord, and God tried to correct it, but he wouldn't receive the correction from God. And isn't it interesting that the one who was allowing sin to continue in his life, that wasn't repenting, that wasn't saying, God, I want to change. God, show me what to do. But the one that just kept doing his own thing, kept going his own way, the one that was far from him, wasn't hearing his voice, was actually getting prophetic words about things that were coming that didn't need to happen. Distance creates distortion. Y'all with me? Shout amen. Amen. But you know what I love is that Samuel wanted to be in God's presence. And he stayed in God's presence. Can I just say that for all of us, God desires you to be close. When Jesus died on the cross, one of the purposes of Jesus dying on the cross, yes, it was to forgive sin, but you know what it was? It was to bring you back into his presence again. Because the Bible says as soon as Jesus died, there was a veil in the holy place that separated God's presence from the people. And the moment Jesus said, it is finished, from the top to the bottom in the temple, the veil was torn. And it was there to make a demonstration that you and I don't have to be outside of the garden anymore. You and I can enter into his presence as we worship. We can enter into his presence and we can hear his voice and we can receive his grace. How many are thankful that we could be in the presence of God? Listen, distance creates distortion, but I love this. The closer you get, the better you hear. Can I say it again? The closer you get, 
the better you hear. Samuel drew close, and as he drew close to God, in his presence, he started to hear the voice of God. So I want to take some time for a second, tell you a story, and then we'll move on to our next point. I've always been someone who's loved worship. I've loved being in God's presence. And i got to tell you that we have to practice God's presence. Frequency is important, right? Going in, spending time. Just, I've, I've been in this season where I just feel like I'm, I got hooked up. You know, I, how many remember back when you had to, you know, when you had dial up on your, anybody remember dial up with your, the internet? Some of you younger people, you're like, I don't even know what that means. What, what is a dial? It's like they don't even know what the old phone dial is. And so, but the way it used to work is you'd, you'd, you'd walk somewhere, and until, and it's same is true with Wi Fi, until you connect to the signal, you can't download anything. And so you go through these seasons where before we had cell phones that would inter, you know, interact with the satellite where you could get internet. You didn't get to get internet until you got somewhere where you could plug in or connect in to download or to get on. And you know what? God wants us to be people who don't go from place to place or week to week and you only dial in every Sunday, but that you and I are connecting every day, spending time in his presence, worshiping him, where there's this constant upload and download and upload and download that's happening because we have a heart that seeks after the Lord, that worships the Lord. That's why we do things like 21 days of fasting and prayers. So as a church, we start practicing dialing in, connecting in to God's presence. And I've been, I've been feeling like lately I've just been had a hard line, connect. I could just connect it in. God's been speaking things to me. I've been sensitive to his presence, and I've been practicing his presence. And I want to encourage you. And if you want to hear the voice of the Lord, start spending time with him in his presence. I'll never forget years ago, um, I was going to speak at, a, at a, uh, a college that asked me to come and do their chapel. It was called Bethany Bible College at the time. It was in Northern California. I was a worship leader at the time, and they wanted me to come speak. And I'm like, what's the topic? And they said, anything you want. So I got there, and sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes that's a challenging thing as a guest because then you're like, the hardest thing about pastoring is getting the what to speak uh, versus the, you know, doing the work and then finishing it. It's like, God, what do you want me to say? And so I was there, and I was kind of just, God, I want to know that when I speak to these students that I'm really saying what you have for them. What's on your heart for them for this particular chapel? And I was kind of all over the place. Well, maybe I'll teach on this. Maybe I'll teach on this. And, and then I started getting this sense that maybe what God wanted to teach him was how to hear his voice. And so I'm like, maybe I need to teach on hearing the voice of God. And so I actually, I just spent time in my hotel room that night. And I, I just kept worshiping. I kept reading my Bible. I kept studying. And the more I did it, the more I felt like it should be hearing the voice of God. So I ended up writing a sermon on hearing the voice of God. Finished the whole thing. And as I was getting in bed, laying in bed, it's about midnight, I'm like, God, I, I'm just still not sure. And I would really like for you to speak to me so I know that this is what I'm supposed to preach about tomorrow, hearing the voice of God. And I just kept leaning in. And literally, it was crazy. All night long, I fell asleep. And it was one of those nights where it was cold outside, so the heater was on. And have you ever been in a room where the heater was on all night? And, and, and as you would wake up in the middle of the night, you're like, because it was just so hot in the room. It was kind of one of those rooms. And so I'm like in the middle of the night and, and I would wake up like 1230. <gasps> it's like, oh, so hot, so hot. And th then immediately I'd be like, I'd start worshiping. And I'd start leaning into God all night long. Well, it just so happened. I kept waking up, go to sleep, go to sleep. Four o'clock in the morning, I wake up. And when I wake up, the first thing that I hear is this in my heart. Read Revelation 3.22. Now, I didn't know what Revelation 3.22 was, and I didn't know if what I just heard was that it was so hot in the room I was getting delirious and dehydrated, or if God was speaking to me. And let me just say, sometimes God will speak to us, and we're going to talk about different ways that he speaks. But sometimes he speaks to our spirit. Like, there, in your heart, in your mind, you hear a voice. Not audibly. I didn't hear an audible voice, but I heard something. I heard Read Revelation 3.22. Now, I knew probably this is God because it's not like I'm just going to randomly wake up and say, I need to read the Bible in Revelation chapter 3.22. It just came out of the blue. And you know sometimes when it's the Lord, when it just won't go away. It just keeps coming back. Anybody know what I'm talking about? So this is my experience now, okay? So finally, I'm like, you know what? 
Um, and actually what, what he said was, when you wake up, read Revelation, or when you get up, read Revelation 3.22. So I'm like, okay, well, that's cool. I'm going back to bed because it's 4 a.m. So I went back to bed, woke up about 6.30, got up, grabbed my Bible. This is before I had the Bible on you know, my phone. I went over and I was a little nervous, like, was that me, you know? And, and I open up the Bible to Revelation 3.22. Now, remember, I'm asking God to speak to me about whether I should preach on hearing the voice of God. I've read the Bible before. I'm sure I've read that passage at some point in my life, but I could not tell you anything about what it was. I open my Bible, and I read the words. He who has an ear to hear, hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. And I got like ducky bumps on the back of my neck right there. I was like, it was the Holy Spirit, like confirming this is what you're supposed to preach on about hearing the voice of God. I know it seems so little, may not even seem significant to you, but for me, I walked out of that moment knowing, just like Samuel, that I had heard the voice of God of the Lord. There's something powerful about knowing that God loves you. There's something powerful about knowing that he has a word in season for you. How many would say amen to that? Come on, Canyon Country, wave at me and say amen. Come on, Santa Paula, say amen. So God speaks through his presence. Here's the second thing. God speaks through his people. So God not only speaks through his presence, but he speaks through his people. It's interesting because now remember, Samuel is is, is drawing close to God's presence. And then what happens? He runs to Eli because he doesn't recognize the voice. And so when he gets to Eli, says this in verse 8, then Eli realized it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So he says to Samuel, go back and lie down. And if someone calls again, respond and say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. You know what's interesting is what that tells me is that maybe we need other people in our life to help clarify God's voice for us. I'm going to tell you there's power. Now, let me just stop and say there are obvious things that you don't need confirmation on. If God were to speak to you today and say, I love you, you don't need to confirm that because it's all throughout the Bible. If things that he's telling you are in the Bible, it did, listen, let me just say, it's not insignificant if God says he loves you. Some of us need to know that he loves us. I remember Sean Bowles sharing that story, how that he, he felt like that God wanted him to go into this church, walk to the back, and tell a woman that, he, that God loved her. And he thought, God, anybody can tell her that. It's so, in, so insignificant. Why, you know, I mean, yes, it's important that you love people, but really, it's in the Bible. Everybody knows God loves you. But he obeyed, and he went, and he walks into the back of the church. He looks at her and says, ma'am, I don't know why, but God told me I'm supposed to come to you and tell you God loves you. She breaks down and starts weeping, and she said, thank you so much. You don't understand. I was like, I think it was suicidal, or I wanted to give up, or I didn't believe in God, and I was driving down the road, and God said, and she said, I felt like I needed a, oh, no, here's what she said. She said, you know what? I'm just done. I don't think God loves me. I don't think he even exists. So, God, I'm going to give you one more chance. So she said, I drove into this parking lot, walked into this church, stood in the back thinking, God, if you love me, let somebody tell me that you love me. Man, isn't that awesome? And how important is the message God loves you? There are things that don't need to be, like, confirmed. If the, God tells you to get baptized, how many know you don't need confirmation on that one? God tells you to tithe. You don't need confirmation on that one. If God tells you to serve, you don't need confirmation. You know, God tells you to forgive somebody. Those are, all past, those are all things in Scripture. So those things are valuable and they're important. Some things don't need that confirmation. But sometimes you need a little bit of help to get discernment on, God, is this you? Is this what you're saying? Is this the timing? And sometimes we need people to help us with that in our lives. And here's what's crazy, is that God used the high priest to help Samuel. Now, you might think that's, that doesn't sound crazy to me. It makes sense to have a pastor or a leader help you discern God's voice. But here's the crazy thing. Eli, Eli had quit hearing God's voice. And Eli had allowed sin in the house of God. And God was getting ready to judge Eli. Some of you say, well, then what are you trying to say? Well, here's the good news. Even the people around you who aren't perfect, if they have a relationship with God, God can still help them 
to help you to figure out what God might be saying in your life. Because how many know if we had to wait for perfect people, nobody would be able to help us? Which is good news, amen? Can I just say real quick, God speaks. Look at me here. Those in Crescenta Valley, hear me. God speaks through pastors. God speaks through spouses. I just, right? God speaks through sermons. Here's a really good one. God speaks through parents, and all the parents said. God speaks through friends. Listen, this is why we, we challenge you so much. Get in a circle. Get in a small group. You need other Christian believers in your life. Why? So they can help you filter and process when God is saying things and things are taking place in your life. You see, here's what's really interesting. Remember how God spoke to Moses? Like The Bible says he spoke to him like no other man because he was so humble. But here's what's crazy. Moses would go up the mountain, and you know what he did? As he went up the mountain to hear God's voice, Joshua would follow And he would stand at a distance and he would watch. And then the Bible says even when Moses would leave and go away, Joshua would stay there even longer. Because I want to tell you, you need to get around people who hear the voice of God. That's why I'm so proud of you for making church a part of your weekly schedule. You're coming to a place where we're talking about God's word and we're hearing his truth. So high five to you. But here's the thing. We need to get around people who hear the voice of the Lord. Kind of like this. I I read this story about a pastor who was talking to someone that worked at a bank. And they they were talking to him. They said, how is it that you guys figure out when someone has a counterfeit bill? Now, this was back before they had all the technology where they could use the pen and all of that. This is back when, before that. They said, how do you know um, that it's not the real thing, that it's a counterfeit? And, and the, the bank teller said, well, it's easy. Is that when you've handled the real thing long enough, you start recognizing the thing that isn't real but is fake. And so the reality is when you and I get around people like Moses did with, or Joshua did with Moses, when we get around people in our life who are credible, who love Jesus, who display fruit of faith in their life, guess what? They're going to recognize the counterfeit and the real thing. That's why we need people. We need God's people in our life to help us discern and hear the voice of the Lord. Somebody shout amen. amen. So his presence reveals his voice. God's people helps reveal his voice. And here's the last one. God speaks through his word. God speaks through his word. I want to show you something in this story that really excited me when I read it about Samuel. Because I love the story of Samuel. Samuel became the prophet when, when, when Eli dies as the high priest. Samuel becomes the prophet of Israel. And I want, you to, I want you to see something that is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. In fact, I pray it sometimes over my own life. Look what it says in 1 Samuel 3, verse 19. The Lord was with Samuel. Can I pause right there and say it? How many want to take that? How many want to say, that's for me too? The Lord was with Samuel. Come on, say this with me. In every location, I want you to say, the Lord was with, but don't put Samuel's name in there. Put your own name in there. You ready? Let's try it together. Ready? Say with me. The Lord was with Jared. Come on, somebody. I want to claim that. It says, the Lord was with Samuel as he grew up, look at this, and he let none, everybody say none, none. of Samuel's words fall to the ground. You know what that means? Literally, this is what it means, that when Samuel would speak on behalf of God and give a prophetic declaration or say something was going to take place, God was watching every time he spoke to make sure that what he said took place. Man, how many would like to walk in that kind of level of blessing and relationship with God? Why? Because he heard the voice of the Lord. Did you know that Jesus was the same thing? Everything Jesus said happened. Why? Because he said, I only say what my Father tells me to say. How many know if you and I are speaking what God says, he's going to fulfill his word. The Bible says that the word doesn't return void, but he sends it out and he watches over it that it might accomplish what he sent it to do. So Samuel is a beautiful picture of that promise in our lives. You and I, when we begin to speak God's promises, God watches over his word to fulfill it. Amen? So it says that God never let one of his words fall to the ground. And then look at this. This is the part I want to focus on. It says, the Lord continued to appear at Shiloh. And there he revealed himself to Samuel through his word. So let me just start by saying this. 
How many want to hear? Every location, look at me. How many of you want to hear the voice of God? Okay, ready? Read your Bible. Every time you open it, you can hear God speak. Every time you get into it and start reading it, you get to hear the voice of God. And what I love is that this man had this ability to get in God's presence and kind of get this connection to God and hear his voice, but it was developed and it was processed and it was strengthened. How? Through getting in the word of God. Because I'm going to tell you, when you're in the word of God, it's back to the counterfeit and the truth. When you begin to get in the word of God and then suddenly you begin to hear God, it's going to line up with what his word says. It's going to line up with his, his character is. It's going to line up with his promises and the things that he does. You see, you and I need God's voice in our life. I want to read to you what it says in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. It says this, Jesus said, It is written, man should not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. In other words, what's interesting is the word live there doesn't mean just to exist. It means to thrive. It means to live fully. Jesus said, I came to give you life, but life abundantly. So how many want to live abundant life? How many want to, don't want to just survive or thrive, survive? You want to thrive. So here's what he says. If you want to live then the way you're really going to live is not just eating a donut or a bagel, which I had before service. It was delicious. I'll share with you afterwards if you want. Just come and talk to me. Those are good. But Jesus said the way that you're really going to live is that you consume my word. And the word there in the Hebrew is the word rhema, not logos. Sometimes, that's a, that's a, a Greek word. Sometimes when it, it uses the word, word, it's the word logos, which is written word. This particular time when Jesus says it, it's a Greek word called rhema, which means a living, spoken, vocal word. So I'll give you an example. Sometimes I'll be reading the Bible. This happens to me all the time. It happened to me yesterday. I'm reading the Bible, and suddenly I read something in the Bible, and it's like it just jumps off the page at me. Anybody ever had that happen to you? What do I mean by that? It, it means something. You're like, whoa, I hadn't seen that before. I had a friend. So years ago when I was in high school, and um, we, were, we were just wanting our friends to get saved. We want people to get saved in the, in the youth group. I was on the worship team. In fact, I was the worship team because we didn't really have many people. So I, 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 this is true. I played the piano, and then I had a keyboard where I played bass. And I had a drum machine. And so for worship with the youth, until we had a band, I would start the drum machine, and then I'd play bass with this hand, and I'd play keyboard with this hand, and I'd sing this way. And I had cymbals between my knees. No, not really, I didn't. And, um, and so I was on the worship team and everything. So this one day, this guy comes walking into our youth service on Tuesday night. And, and again, I'm not creating stereotypes. I'm just telling you what it was like in Selma, California. He was a cholo. Because he had the big baggy pants, he had the rolled bandana that went around like this. He was like, Esse. That's kind of how he talked. And so he comes walking in, he's standing there, he's looking around, and like, we're just worshiping God. His name was Big Jim Huerta. I mean, he was gangsta all the way. Sorenos, man. And you know what happened? Big Jim Huerta gave his life to Jesus, got saved. He was on fire for God. The next Tuesday, he's back at youth group. And I'm finished with worship, and we do the service. And afterwards, I'm like, dude, what's going on? I mean, haven't you accepted the Lord? How's it going? He's like, oh, man. He's like, let me show you something. Let me show you something. I'm like, what is it? And he opens up his Bible, and he turns to Acts. And he, he turns to the story where we, we talked about it last week, I think it was, or a week before, where when Paul and Silas were worshiping in, in jail, and God opened the prison, Right? And the jailer who was in charge, he runs in and is going to kill himself because he thinks everybody's left. And then Peter, or Paul says, don't kill yourself. And, and, and he says, come in, we're all here. And he preaches the gospel to him. And, then, and this is what happens. He said, what must I do? And, and Paul says this, repent and call upon the name of the Lord and you and your household will be saved. And Jim Huerta looked at me and said, Ese, look at what it says. I'm like, what does it say? He said, you and your house will be saved. He goes, God's saying, I got saved, so that means my whole house is going to get saved. 
What was happening? God was speaking a rhema word from the Bible. And can I tell you that that's exactly what happened? Jim's brother got saved. Jim's mom got saved. Jim's dad got saved. Jim's grandpa got saved. Jim's uncle got saved. Come on, that was a promise, a rhema from the word of God that he had for him. Man, how awesome, because he contended for it. He prayed for it. He shared his faith. He invited in the church. When you get a word, a rhyme, a living word from God, you start living it. You start walking it. You start believing it. Why? Because the God of heaven has spoken a promise to you. Somebody shout amen. Come on, I'm preaching better than you're amen and amen. Pastor Jerry, sorry. Sorry, get a little excited. Get a little excited. Come on, Canyon Country, give me a big amen. Competition time. Santa Paula, give me a big amen. <laughs> Crescenta Valley, come on, give me a big amen. Valencia, give me a big amen. Yeah. Awesome. Hawaii, amen. Okay. So can I say this as we bring this to a close? If the word teaches us, like Samuel, to hear his voice, then we need to learn to listen through repetition. The more we get in the word, the more we're going to hear and understand. I'll tell you a story real quick, and then we're going to land this plane. Just a, another cool story of how God speaks in, in my own life. When I, when I hear these stories, it, it encourages me because God is speaking. And sometimes it's through, so, a lot of times, guys, when I'm here preaching, it's because God has given me something in his word that was a rhema insider revelation that I want to share with you. Obviously, it's biblical. It's part of the context. It's part of, the, um, it's part of what God's saying overall, holistically in Scripture and all of that. But sometimes it's just like, boom, it comes alive. I'll never forget one, one time I was, it was the beginning of the year, and I was kind of doing my what am I going to do for the new year list of goals. Anybody ever do that? So I'm doing my list of what, what I believe God wants to do, and... Um, Making, you know, the list. I'm going to lose three pounds. I'm going to eat healthy. I'm going to, you know, anybody ever do those kinds of things? Anybody ever break them? <laughs> Amen. Thank you. We got someone honest right there. <laughs> Amazing. Amen. And so as I'm in the middle of writing this down, suddenly, again, out of the blue, I hear this voice in my heart say, find Judson Cornwall and have him pray over you that his mantle will come upon you. I'm like, what? Now, I knew the name, Judson Cornwall. I don't remember. At first, I was like, who's Judson Cornwall? And then I remembered I had a book in my library on worship from a guy named Judson Cornwall. I, I grabbed the book, and I look, and it's this guy who's, you know, very, looked very old at the time. I mean, you know, when you're young, everybody looks really old. <laughs> and he looked like he was in his 70s on this book cover. And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, okay. Um, he wrote this book on worship. It really ministered to me. So there's some kind of connection. Okay, so I wrote it down. And um, this was back, some of you, before we had the, th had the thing called the Internet. Some of you didn't know that that wasn't created with Adam and Eve. It actually came <laughs> later. And so... When it came to finding someone, you couldn't like Google or go on Facebook or whatever. You, you literally, the only way to find someone was hire a private investigator. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? Where they could do records and research. And so, so I'm like, but here's the thing. I really felt like it was the Lord. And so we had at the church, we had all these people coming through that were well-known pastors and leaders. And I would ask them, hey, do you know Judson Cornwall? Oh, yeah, he's got a great ministry. Do you know where he is? Is he still alive? And they're like, I don't know. I, I have no idea. And, and for months, like six months, I was trying to find this guy, praying about it. And I would worship. I would pray. I'd be like, God, if this is you, you know, I want to do what you want me to do. And, but I don't know where he is. And so one night, I just got frustrated. I got so frustrated because for months, and I'm thinking, it just was me. It wasn't God. And suddenly, I'm laying in bed. I'm, I'm practicing the presence of God because I'm in this worshipful mindset of prayer. And, and finally, I just kind of get real with God. And I'm like, God, I I'm done with this. If you want me to find Judson Cornwall and have him pray for me that his mantle will come upon me, I don't have the money to hire an investigator. I don't know where he is. So you need to tell me where he is. Now, some of you, if you're like, you talk to God like that? <laughs> yes. 
Because if I don't, he knows it anyway. So now I'm lying. I'm hiding what I'm doing. So it's a double sin. Not, not really. You're not sinning. You're not sinning being honest with God. If you're frustrated with God, tell him. If you're struggling with God, tell him. If you're walking through something, tell him. Come on, y'all with me, shout amen. Come on, every location, shout amen. So I tell him that. I said, God, if it's you, you're just going to have to tell me where he is. Sure as day, I, I heard that voice again. And here's what God said. Okay. When you get up in the morning, dial 411, ask for Phoenix, and then ask the operator for Judson Cornwall. So I'm like, okay. And I wanted to get up right then, but I, I did what God said because I didn't want to mess up the th anything. I went right back to sleep, woke up the next morning. I don't know how I held off, but I actually waited till I got into the office and it was like 8.05 and I'll never forget. I picked up the church phone. I dialed nine to get an outside number. I dialed 411, came on. I'm like, can you give me Phoenix? And they're like, yes. What is the number? I said, I'd like the number for Judson Cornwall. And three seconds went by that felt like three decades. But finally, they came on the other line and they said, here's your number. I write it down, pick up the phone, call it. Judson Cornwall's secretary answers and says, hello, Judson Cornwall's office, can I help you? Three minutes later, I'm on the phone with Judson Cornwall. And Judson Cornwall, who wrote 53 books on worship, I was a worship leader at the time, never had a grandpa in my life because my grandpa had died when I was young, became my spiritual grandpa. In fact, he helped me walk through a difficult season in my life when I was trying to make a decision of God's will. And had I done the wrong thing or had I gone the other way without his counsel, Higher Vision Church wouldn't be here today. And she wouldn't be my daughter-in-law. And by the way, did I tell you I have a, I have a grandson? <laughs> and I wouldn't have a grandson named Arbor. I'm so thankful that God speaks. What are the promises he has waiting for you? Yeah. 